Hello YouTube, this is Tarkon633, back with another Transformers review. This time we're going to take a look at the Transformers Deluxe Class Titan's Return Perceptor with his Titan Master partner, Convex. Now this is actually a really interesting figure, especially since it's a well-needed update to the character for the main line of Generations. While the previous release in the Reveal the Shield line was pretty good for what it was, it was definitely not the G1 style Perceptor that I was kind of looking for to to a Generations update. This is exactly what I wanted in the overall design, and the fact that they actually kept him having his microscope mode this time is what really makes this much better, in my opinion, than what we've seen with the previous release. Anyways, we're going to take a look at the box first. The box has a really nice artist renderation of Convex attaching to Perceptor. It shows a picture of his vehicle mode, or should I say his microscope mode, should I say. It has another picture of Perceptor there. Says that the figure transfers in 13 steps and has a bio as normal, and that covers the box. Now we're going to take a look more closely at the figure itself. Before anything else, we're going to take a look at the character card that is included with this release, which is another really nice artwork of the character that we see on the figure itself. And before anything else, we're going to take a few comparisons here. Here is Perceptor next to his G1 counterpart, which I actually do own. Which is shorter, since the G1 toy was almost roughly a Voyager-style toy, from what I could tell. So that's pretty interesting. And here he is next to the Reveal the Shield Deluxe, which, as I mentioned earlier, is pretty good, but it does have its own fair share of issues. Which is actually shorter than this release. So that pretty much covers Perceptor in terms of comparison. We're going to take a more close look at Perceptor itself. His Headmaster, Convex, is on the standard ball train, as we've seen with the other Titan Masters, and has a very nice face sculpt of Perceptor, so that's really nice. The microscope piece is articulated, since it actually pegs onto the piece itself, and because of that, it is articulated in a couple areas. You can spin this 360 and bend it forward and back. You can move it via the pin there, due to transformation, so it does have a lot of movement from there on. He has ball joints at the shoulders with good range of movement and double joints due to the four transformation, so that's really nice. He does have swivels at the biceps with the single elbow joint that just goes pretty much 90 degrees. His hands can pivot a bit due to transformation, but that's about it. He has no waist articulation, but he's got hinged hips, so that's nice. Swivels at the thighs. More than 90 degrees at the knees due to transformation, and his feet pivot a bit due to transformation. So that's pretty much it for articulation-wise. This piece can open, since it is a part of the microscope transformation, so that's really nice. And we're actually going to take a look at a few things before we go on to the transformation itself. First, we're going to take a more close look at the gun, which did pop out here. The gun is very similar to what we've seen with other Titans Return releases, however, the barrel piece is new. And this piece here actually resembles something from what I could tell from the IDW comics, since the version of the gun that Perceptor uses in the comics has the stand piece there, so that's pretty cool. You can actually, if you want to take the G1 gun, if you happen to have the G1 release of Perceptor, and it does fit in his hand with no issue, so that's really nice that you're able to do so. Or if you want to, you can take the gun that was included with Blur, and although that gun does not fit in the hand of the Generations release of Perceptor, it does indeed fit in this new Perceptor's hand. So you can slide it in. It does take a little bit of effort, but once you put it in, it's not really that problematic. So there you go. So it's really cool that you can actually do that. So now we will move on to the transformation. First, we're going to remove Convex which is a little bit tricky due to the scope, but you can pull them off. And it's really rather tight attachment there. So now you got a headless body. And it gets kind of weird from here because you actually need to move this entire piece upward. And it just looks very strange because of the way that it transforms, but it does make sense later down the road. You're going to keep the little tray piece attached like this. Turn the arms around, collapse the hands, into the arms and slide them down completely so that it forms into the cavity there. This is very similar to what we see with the G1 Perceptor. So we're going to do the same with the other side. 
So it looks like this. We're going to take these pieces. And this is very G1 Perceptor-esque. Because now you're going to move the legs and they're going to actually form the front part of the microscope. So we're going to collapse the feet. Then we're going to take this entire piece and pull it. It's a little tricky, but once we get it, we should be able to get it. Okay, never mind. There we go. For some reason, it wasn't working. We're going to pull it this way. Having a little bit of trouble earlier. But then we're going to peg these pieces onto the side here, on both sides. And from there, to finish off the transformation, we're going to move the joint on the pin, pull it down, and then face this downward. And there we have Perceptor in his microscope mode. And now we have him fully in his microscope mode. In this mode, it's actually quite reminiscent of the G1 design. As it's shown on the box, you actually can just keep the Titan Master and just leave it here. What's actually cool is that, similar to the G1 toy, the actual scope is actually a fully functional microscope. Obviously, you're not going to get the full on kind of deal that microscopes do, but it does pretty decent in terms of a toy kind of style microscope, at least the way that it works. It does have a fully functional zoom in piece, which is really nice. And that's pretty much it in terms of gimmicks when it comes to this microscope mode on its own. Here's a comparison with the G1 toy, which is extremely loose since it actually isn't my copy and my particular one that I got over the years is kind of going for wear. But it does have a really nice reminiscence of the design for both of them, so that's really cool. And actually, this particular toy can actually go to its third tankish mode. It was actually shown in a lot of the promotional shots, but it was never actually shown on the box or on the instructions, so I find that very strange. To change it to that mode, we're just going to keep it somewhat in this mode, but in order to get it fully into that mode, you do need to move a few parts in order to get things into place. And mostly it's just going to lay down almost like this, but what we're going to do is turn these components around, since these will actually form the treads. We're actually going to use the opposite ends of the legs, like this. We're going to pull this piece inside outward, which is a little bit tricky, but you do need to move a few pieces in order to get that blue piece out. So there we go. It's free now, so we're just going to pull it up. You do need to kind of use a little bit of force slightly. It's a little bit scary to move that joint, but it's not a whole lot of problems. But we're going to do the same for the other side. This one seems a little less problematic than the other side for me for some reason. I'm just going to pull this and then they will lay down like this. And using the secondary pegs, we're actually going to use the same area pegging onto the limb pieces there. And this will form the tank mode. You do need to get it all situated in a certain way, since they do kind of peg in at an angle. It's a little bit tricky sometimes to actually match it, but it's not the worst. So, there we go. It's kind of keeping both of them at the same time, which is a little bit more tricky than attaching them to begin with. But, should peg together. So there we go. Now we're just going to move this piece back up. So now we got the kind of tank mode. To finish off the look, we're actually going to take this little piece and pull it up. So now we got it like this. And now we got Perceptor in his tank like mode. You can put a Titan Master if you wish to and attach it onto a little peg area, which is right there. And you can actually let him stand up and kind of. I guess, controlling the little tank. It's kind of hard to actually keep the Titan Master in the peg, but it does allow you to do so. And for some reason, I have a problem with a lot of the Titan Masters not working properly there. So that pretty much covers this third mode, which for some reason was never really in the instructions. This is actually a mode that's actually featured on the G1 Toys original design, which we're just going to quickly change it into a very similar mode. There's a little less steps for this one since it is just using a very similar design. This one you do need to just kind of turn it around 360. 
try to get in there. Unfortunately, due to its old age, it doesn't exactly like to stay in this mode well since the legs causes it to drop. So I'm just gonna have to hold it, fortunately. So you pretty much get the idea with this next to it. Otherwise, it does fall in like that. So I guess it's cool that you actually have a third mode even if it's not properly promoted on the box or on the instructions. So if you're a fan of Perceptor, then I definitely recommend this release. It does have a few wonky parts since the pegs don't like to stay in that well at times, and the fact that the other two modes are a little bit lackluster in the grand scheme of things since they're a lot smaller and just don't have enough of an impact to me personally, even though I do like the microscope mode. And at least the robot mode is exactly where the figure shines, and I think that's fine since I think most people will actually display them in robot mode, so it makes sense that the robot mode has to be the best out of the three modes. But overall, I think this is definitely a worthwhile pickup, especially if you've been getting all the Titans Return releases at this point, and it will look really nice with the other Autobots now that it's a lot more G1 accurate compared to what we've seen in the past. Anyways, I got this at BBTS along with Topspin, which we'll look at next, but for now, please comment and subscribe and check out Hero Club and Hero Taku. Also check me on Twitter under Darkon633, and don't forget to check down the other channels down below. Please check the little bell at the bottom of the screen in order to see my content go up as soon as possible. But for now, I'll be seeing you later, YouTube, and I'll bring more Transformers reviews and more.